Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast Special Edition Show 2023 24 NBA season predictions. Three parter. First part is going to be the standings projections and how the playoffs are going to play out and season awards. Part two is going to be superlatives. And then part three is going to be betting. So let's get going with it. It's going to be a ton of fun. And we will start with the Eastern Conference. In first place in the conference, I have finishing with a record of 57-25, and 25, the Boston Celtics. Um, I think Boston's the best roster in the NBA. Um, Jason Tatum, I think, is in for a monster year. Jalen Brown, I think um, the trade stuff is going to kind of blow over. Um, they had Chris Epps for Zingas. I know they get rid of Marcus Smart, but that might be addition by subtraction. I'm not the biggest Marcus Smart fan. He's always hurt. I know he's a good defensive player, but he, to me, is just streaky as an offensive player. Um, and then you have what should be an improved bench. I like Peyton Pritchard. Um, Derek White It's a good player. Um, so I expect Boston to be better. And Joe Mazzulla in year two, I expect him uh, to make some adjustments and whatnot from the first year. Second place in the conference, I have with a record of 54 and 28, the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, the Bucks are interesting. Um, obviously, they go out and add Dame Willard, so they have him and Giannis together now. Chris Middleton's still there, Drew Holiday gone, and now he's with Boston. How come we didn't even talk about Drew Holiday with the Celtics? I think he's going to have a terrific impact in Boston. So I think it's um, a downgrade defensively for Milwaukee, but obviously an upgrade offensively with Dame's capability to just carry the team. Um, I just don't like their depth. Um, Bobby Portis is still there. Pat Connaughton, just like a lot of mad depth. They had campaign. It felt like they were, were too excited about campaign. And then they have a new coach in Adrian Griffin. Um, third in the conference, I have the record of 50 and 32, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, I think the Cavs are a solid team. I think they should be the, the pick for the three seed. Um, had a nice regular season last year, and then they uh, crapped the bet against the Knicks in the first round of the playoffs. Um, Donovan Mitchell, I don't know if he's the guy to lead your team to a championship, but all of a sudden there's rumors that he wants out of Cleveland and he might be the next star trade, and it would be the... Uh, Second time in this recent time span where he'd be traded. Um, you have Evan Mobley, who a lot of people expect to be better. Um, you have Darius Garland, Jared Allen, and you get Max Drews at the small forward position, which was a big upgrade for them. So Cleveland should be better. Don't like their depth, though. Um, in fourth in the conference, I have with a record of 47 and 35, the Philadelphia 76ers. This was the hardest team to predict because we don't know what the James Harden situation is going to be and whether he even plays for the Sixers this season. Um, Joel Embiid's already in trade rumors in a weird way because it was reported that, uh, the Knicks have an offer for Embiid already, which is insane, so, Philly's really hard to predict. I don't think Embiid will be traded this year. Maybe in the offseason if it goes really, really poorly. Um, and he's still a top two center in the NBA, as far as I'm concerned. And I think that if Philly overachieves, he's going to be the reason. And Nick Nurse is in as their coach now. Um, Tyrese Maxey's going to be better. Um, Tobias Harris is still there. Fifth in the conference, I have the record of 46 and 36, the New York Knicks. This is another kind of a hard one to predict, too, because they're also a team that's in play to trade for somebody like Joel Embiid or Pascal Siakam or one of those Bulls players, maybe, like DeRozan or Levine. But I don't know if that's going to happen this year. They keep saying it's going to happen, they, as in the media. and But my question is, when? And who? Um, but yeah, I think 46 and 36 is a respectable record for the Knicks. Um, double digit over 500. Um, they had a better record last year, but 
this record is predicted based on maybe there's some more injuries. And I just think that there's better teams in this conference than the Knicks. But I do think they're a good team. Double digits over 500 is very reasonable. Um, Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, really good duo. RJ Barrett, still there. Um, very um, polarizing player, obviously. Um, and then you have Dante DiVincenzo as the big free agent signing. Um, you have Josh Hart, who they extended, got the deadline last year. Um, Emmanuel Quickly was a finalist for sixth man of the year. A um, little bitter that uh, that bet didn't cash that I had that 80-1 to one future on. Um, but anyway, really good team. Mitchell Robinson's still their starting center. So um, should be a good regular season team. Sixth place in the conference, I have the record of 44 and 38, the Atlanta Hawks. Um, I like the Hawks this year. I'm Quinn Snyder, a full season. Um, Trey Young, I think, will be better. DeJounte Murray, good player. Um, good center combo in Clint Capella. And Onyeka Kwangu. Sadiq Bey. Um, DeAndre Hunter. So they have some pieces, and I think that they're like a trade team too, potentially. Seventh in the conference, I have a record of 44 and 38, the Miami Heat. Um, I think the Heat take a step back in terms of their finals run. Um, I don't think they care about the regular season. I know a lot of people like the Heat with a chip on their shoulder, but I just don't think they're as good. They lose Max Struess, they lose Gabe Vincent. Um, Jimmy Butler isn't healthy all the time. That could be a, a a dark horse star that could get traded potentially. Not this year, but maybe next year or the following year. Like that's something to keep an eye on. Um, Bam Adebayo is amazing. Um, and then Kyle Lowry's still there. So, and I also think the Heat are also a candidate to make a panic trade for somebody too if uh they got off to a slow start and other teams in the conference are ahead of them. Um. And, of course, they have the best coach in the NBA, Eric Spolstra, and that would be the reason to think that they're a top-four team in the East from a record standpoint, which they are probably one of the best four teams in the East from a talent standpoint, but or at least top five, but they lose Drews and Vincent. Those are two huge losses. You're going to be relying on Duncan Robinson and Josh Richardson and their past performances – if they are to be a top three in the East this year. So I picked them seventh. But like I said, um, they're a team that only cares for the playoffs. Eighth, I have the record of 42 and 40, the Indiana Pacers. Um, I like this Pacers team. Um, Who knows, maybe they would have been a playoff team last year. Tyrese Halliburton didn't get hurt. He's an absolute superstar if he... um, if he isn't already, um, Rick Carlisle's done a nice job. I like the pickup of Obi Toppin. Um, ben Matherin and Andrew Nemhart are good young players. Um, Miles Turner's still amazingly there. Buddy Heald's in trade rumors, but why? This team's going to be good. So, yeah, I like this Pacers team a lot. Ninth and East, I have the record of 39-43 to Toronto Raptors. Um under 500 in the East could get you a play in, I think, this year. That's how weak I think the conference is. Um, the Raptors, I think, are in like a stage of transition. Um, if they're worse than this, they're obviously going to be a seller. And like guys like Pascal Siakam or um, some other guys on the roster, OG and OB could be had for trades. They lose Fred Van Vliet. That's a big loss. Dennis Schroeder's now their starting point guard. Scotty Barnes, they're relying on to make a job. Same with Precious Achiwa. Um, 10th, I have with the record of 37 and 45, the Orlando Magic. I think this is a playing team. I think they could be this year Sacramento. But with the worse record. But I also think they could be this year's Oklahoma City, which is more realistic for them, where they make the playing tournament. They, uh, take a step in terms of their player development. And that's what I think. I know I have them with the losing record. But that's okay. I have them in the playing tournament. And Jamal Mosley's a good coach. 
um, our promising coach, I should say. Um, I love Franz Wagner and Paolo Banchero, two good young centerpieces. Wendell Carter Jr. is still there. Um, but they have some veterans on this team that I like to, like Joe Ingles is on this team, and obviously Carter's one of them. Um, and But they have a guard problem, like Markel Fultz, Anthony Black, Cole Anthony. They need to sort that out. 11th dive in the conference with 32 and 50, the Brooklyn Nets. I think the Brooklyn Nets are going to be bad. Um, Mikkel Bridges, I think, will put up his stats. Cam Johnson should be better. Um, Nick Claxton, their starting center, he's solid. I'm not a Spencer Dinwiddie fan. You all know that. He's just a trash-talking uh, player that um, doesn't help teams win. Um, so... I'm down on Brooklyn. Um, although this could be more than that if Bridges is better than what I think he is, or if um, Jock Vaughn gets a lot out of this team again. Twelfth, I have a thirty and fifty-two. The Chicago Bulls. I think the Bulls um, are in trouble. I think they have blow it up potential. No Lonzo Ball this year. Um, Demar Derozan, Zach Levine. Nick Vucevic all still there. Patrick Williams, young player that they're relying on. Kobe White still there, amazingly enough. And I think Billy Donovan could be um, in play to be the first coach fired if things go really poor. 13th with the record of 28 and 54, the Charlotte Hornets. Um, this is an analytic darling, but I'm not buying. Um, this roster is very weak. LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller are going to be relied upon to do a lot. Um I like their center, Mark Williams. Gordon Hayward's always hurt. Um, and Steve Clifford's a good coach. But it's new ownership. The new ownership didn't hire Steve Clifford. So that's another coach that could be fired. 14th, the Detroit Pistons, 27-55. and 55. Um, This Detroit team's not very good. I know Cade Cunningham's coming back. But the worst thing that happened to them was dropping in the lottery. I understand Oscar Thompson has a chance to be an all-star type of player. But losing out on Wembenyama, Scoot, and Brandon Miller, one of those three guys, is a disaster for the Pistons. They needed another guy to go with Cade Cunningham, and um, they missed. Although, Oscar might be that guy. You never know. And I like Jaden Ivey, too. He's a really good player, too. And then they have some big man conundrum with James Wiseman and Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Doran, Marvin Bagley. So they have to figure out that situation. They have some veterans that I like too. Bojan Bogdanovic, who I think can be traded. And Joe Harris, who I think can be had in a trade as well. And at the bottom of this conference, I have the record of 24 and 58, the Washington Wizards. I think the Wizards are going to stink. And I think this team is a, a bunch of... Young players who they're deciding whether they're keepers or not, and veterans who they're trying to trade. Um, Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole are going to put up their points. Cordy Kispert, good young player. Denny and Vija just got paid. Daniel Gafford, they like. But Kalabali is a player that um, is very promising rookie. And then another obvious first coach fired candidate is. West on Silk Jr. All right, to the Western Conference regular season. I have as the number one seed with the record of 55 and 27, the Denver Nuggets. Um, your reigning NBA champions get my respect, and they get my pick for the one seed. They probably would have been my one seed pick in the West, even if they didn't win the title because of their home field advantage and the dominance of Nikola Jokic. Um, Jamal Murray is a star. In case you did not know that. Um, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, KCP, good starting five. Christian Braun off the bench, who are Brown, who they're relying on to make that jump. Zeke Naji got paid. And then there's some young guys they're relying on, too. Julian Strawweather, Peyton Watson to have impacts as well as well as Braun. And then Jalen Pickett, I like, too, the good young point guard. And then Reggie Jackson and DeAndre Jordan are just veterans that... uh 
feel like placeholders to me. And Justin Holiday, I like too. He's a good uh, three and D guy. So Denver's deep, but Jokic and his health is very important. And same with Murray, and obviously MPJ too. Second in the West, I have the record of fifty-two and thirty to Los Angeles Lakers. I love this Lakers team this year. Um, I think that they might give a shit about the regular season for once. Um, I know LeBron is in year twenty-one, which is absolutely insane. Um, but he's not washed up. LeBron is not washed up. He's not Tom Brady on the Bucks in his last Bucks season. He's way better than that in terms of their sports. He's not washed up, and I think he has a point to prove. Anthony Davis, I think, is going to be a monster, too. Um, Austin Reeves, third best player on the team. He's really, really good. Um, And was really good with Team USA. Uh, D'Angelo Russell's starting point guard. Gabe Vincent was a pickup in free agency, who I liked. Um, Jared Vanderbilt, they got in the trade last year. Rui Hachimura, they got in a trade. They are a deep, deep, deep team, and... I think that Darwin Ham, um, that hire was a good hire, but it just took a while for him to learn and adjust. And plus, LeBron and Anthony Davis weren't healthy for most of the last season. That's why they were in the play-in tournament. If they were healthy all last year, they probably would have been like the fourth seed in the West. Maybe third. But yeah, this team's absolutely great. And... I know those trades changed their season and Westbrook was a cancer and all that. But um, the, keeping those two guys healthy is the most important thing for the Lakers. Third in the West side with a record of 15-32, the Phoenix Suns. Um, this Suns team, I feel like, is the Western Conference version of the Milwaukee Bucks, where it's all this star power and not much depth. Obviously, Bradley Beal joins Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Um... Yusuf Nurkic is now their starting center with um, them sending uh, DeAndre Ayton to Portland in the three-way Damian Lillard trade. Um, Josh Okoge is slated to be their starting small forward. I like Nasir Little. Grayson Allen could be a heat checker off the bench. Eric Gordon, to me, feels like he's washed up. I don't like the depth of the Suns team. Maybe they make another trade or they get a buyout guy or something, but 50 wins on principles because... Of their big three. And I think that Devin Booker. Is. A star. And I mean a super duper duper star. That. Doesn't get the respect he deserves. Um, Fourth in the West. I have. With the record. Of 49 and 33. The. Oklahoma City Thunder. Yes. The Oklahoma City Thunder. I think the Thunder are going to kill it. I love this team. Shea Gilgis-Alexander, to me, is a top 10 player in the NBA. Um, Josh Giddey's going to make a big leap. Jalen Williams is awesome. The one that spells his name J-A-L-E-N. The J-A-Y-L-I-N Williams is really good, too. Chad Holmgren, back from his injury. And he is going to be amazing. Lou Dort, still around. Osame Dang's going to see minutes. But yeah, this team is going to be amazing, especially at home. And SGA, to me, is a real guy. And a real guy in terms of he could be the best player on a contender. That's how strongly I feel about SGA. Fifth in the West. I have the record of 48 and 34. The Minnesota Timberwolves. I like this Timberwolves team a lot. Um, Anthony Edwards, to me, this is the year he becomes the guy. Like how SGA is the guy in Oklahoma City. I feel the same way about Anthony Edwards. Carl Anthony Towns, to me, is a, a good second fiddle. He'll put up his stats. I think Rudy Gobert will be better. Jaden McDaniels just got paid. Mike Conley... Nice veteran point guard. It's a, been an all-star before. But, yeah, I like some of their depth and not a lot of their depth. That reads good. Kyle Anderson has had moments. Shake Milton's had moments. Nikhil Alexander-Walker's bounced around a little bit. I feel like he's traded every year. 
And I like their coach, Chris Finch. Sixth, I have with the record of 48 and 34, the Golden State Warriors. I think the Warriors are going to be pretty good. Um, I think that um, they're a team that is kind of like Miami in the sense of we're not going to really care about the regular season. We'll turn it on when it matters or when we're on national TV and depending on the opponent, like the Celtics, or if they play at the Garden against the Knicks or whomever. Um, Lakers, obviously. And an opening night against the Suns, maybe. Um, but yeah, Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, that's been the uh, the trio that they've had over the last decade. That's been the focal of this somewhat of a dynasty. Um, Andrew Wiggins, I think, will be better. He was hurt last year. Kevin Looney is up and down. Um, they're relying on a lot of young guys to be impactful. Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Modi, um, Brandon Podzinski, Trace Jackson Davis, and obviously they uh, acquire Chris Paul, and he's going to be like their sixth man. Or they can go small and play Draymond at the five, Wiggins at the four, Clay at the three, Steph at the two, and then Chris runs the point. So that's the way you go small with the Warriors. But yeah, um, the Warriors are uh, going to be there. Seventh in the West side with the record of 46 and 36, the Sacramento Kings. Yes, a double digit over 500 team in the playing tournament. That's how deep I think the West is. Um, I think that um, Sacramento is a team that. Um, overachieved to some degree last year. I think long-term they'll be there, but I think they take a little bit of a step back this season. I know De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis is a good combo. Um, and then they have Keegan Murray, who they expect to make a jump. Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, they add Chris Duarte. Sasha Vezenkov, they really like this rookie. We'll see what impact he makes. Harrison Barn they bring back on an extension. And Mike Brown is a guy that um really earned coach of the year last year. He's a defensive coach, but uh Sacramento's not a good defensive team. I'm sorry. Eighth in the West side with the record of forty four and thirty eight, the Memphis Grizzlies. Um I have them all the way down to eighth because obviously John Moran's missing the start of the season. Um but once Jock comes back, I think that they'll get the ball rolling a little bit. Um, but my worry for them is that um, they lose Stephen Adams for the season. And then Brandon Clark is out for them, too. And now Xavier Tillman is slated to be their starting center. They could make a trade for somebody. But who is it? They have to trade for someone on an expiring, I believe. Because Adams is not an expiring contract. Or you just move Triple J to center and you acquire someone to play power forward for you. We'll see where they go. Looks like Derek Rose is going to start a point guard for them while Ja misses. Marcus Smart. Um, Desmond Bain is a guy that um, really took a step up last season. Um, but they have some other guys that, um, could pop for them. We'll see. Um, ninth in the West, I have the record of 44 and 38, the Los Angeles Clippers. I think the Clippers, um, are no longer a contender. Um, their two stars, Kawhi and Paul George, never stay healthy. That's just a fact. Um, Russell Westbrook's still on the team. They got Bones Highland last year from Denver. Terrence Mann is the holdup in a possible James Harden trade, and he is, to me, is not a centerpiece type of player. A lot of, like, past good players are on this team, like Nick Batum, Robert Covington, Norman Powell, Marcus Morris. Um, Mason Plumley and Avisa Zubac is their center combo. Kenny Martin Jr. to get from Houston. But yeah, interesting team. Um, we'll see if they uh pull off a hard end trade or not. Um 
Number 10, I have the New Orleans Pelicans at 42 and 40. Um, I think this is a playoff team or play-in team, I should say. Um, 42 and 40, I don't think, would satisfy that fan base. Um, this is, that conference is so good. Um, they're relying on Zion to stay healthy, and he hasn't been healthy in a long time, I feel like. Um, Brandon Ingram was having some drama problems with Team USA. CJ McCollum's still there. Herb Jones, good young player that they like. Jordan Hawkins is a rookie they like. Kira Lewis really hasn't made an impact. Larry Nance is a good bench guy. Jonas Valanciunas, solid starting center. Um, in 11th in the West, I have the record of 37-45, and 45, the Dallas Mavericks. I think this Mavericks team is going to blow. I think they're ass, potentially. Like, they're a one-man wrecking crew. We all know that. Luka is amazing, but his teammates are all either quitters, washed up, or not good. Like, literally. Like, Kyrie's a quitter. And he's just somebody that um, picks and chooses when he wants to try. Um, they get Seth Curry, who I like. And that's, like, when I said that comment about the Mavs, about Lucas' teammates, that doesn't apply to Seth Curry. I love Seth Curry. I think he um, is a really good bench player and somebody that can start for them as well in case they want to go small or move Tim Hardaway Jr. to the bench. Um, Grant Williams they get from Boston. We'll see if he finally uh, makes that jump that they that Boston thought of him. And then Derek Lively, solid rookie. We'll see if he gets some time. Number 12 in the conference, I have a 34 and 48, the Utah Jazz. This was a team that overachieved last year, obviously. Um, they have a rock star of a coach in Will Hardy. A rock star. But I just don't like his roster. This team was supposed to tank last year and be one of the favorites for Victor Wembanyama. And then, obviously, that didn't happen. And they ended up um, being a competitive basketball team. Laurie Markkinen, to me, um, to me, he had a career year last year. I don't know if he'll repeat that. They get John Collins from the Hawks. Walker Kessler, good young center. Their starting point guard slated right now to be Chris Dunn, former bust draft pick. Count Day George, I've heard some high praise about. And um, they have a, a couple of good um, two guards in Jordan Clarkson and Colin Sexton. Clarkson's going to be a sixth man. And then Sexton's, to me, a guy that could be trade bait. And John Collins, again, could be trade bait. And then a good young power forward in Taylor Hendricks, who oh, I should have brought up earlier as well. So interesting team, but not there. 13th in the West, I have the record of 30-52, and 52, the Houston Rockets. Um, the Rockets are an interesting team. Um, getting some veterans into the mix to go with their young core. They signed Fred Van Vliet to that big contract, and they bring in Dylan Brooks. They're hoping that Fred Van Vliet could be what Jalen Brunson is to the Knicks. I don't know about that. They overpaid Van Vliet, although we did think thought we did think that Brunson was overpaid at the time. Let's not forget that. At the time we thought that Brunson was overpaid, but he might be super duper underpaid, if anything. But they're relying on a lot of their young guys to make jumps. Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, Alperin Sengun. And then some rookies that are like Eamon Thompson and Cam Whitmore. Tari Eason's another young guy that I like. So we'll see with this team. And they're going to be fun. But 30 wins, um, I think, is reasonable. But if, they, if they're in the mix for the play in the West, it's because Ime Adoku coaches out of his mind. 14th, the Portland Trailblazers. I have 26 and 56. I think this team sucks. I mean, they didn't do a bad job in the Dame deal, and they have a lot of future capital now. 
But I don't like this team. Scoot Henderson's going to be amazing. He's going to be fun to watch. Chris Murray's another rookie that they have that I like. And Fernie Simons is going to put up his points. I think DeAndre Ayton, Malcolm Brogdon, even Jeremy Grant, maybe even Matej Thibel, and obviously uh, Time Lord Rob Williams are all trade bait potentially. So it's a mix of veterans and youth. A lot worse than Houston, in my opinion, because of guys on Portland that, <coughs> excuse me, just um, have owner's contracts like Aiton. And who knows what they can get for Grant. But listen, I like their draft capital and everything, but somebody has to be bad in the West other than the next team, the San Antonio Spurs, who I have in the cellar, 24-58. and 58. I wanted to pick the Spurs to be better than this. But the reality is that they have the worst roster, arguably, in the entire league. And Victor Wembanyama can't change that overnight. I'm sorry. He's going to be a must-see TV. Their first game is on national TV against the Mavericks this week. And I just um, don't see the Spurs getting the 30 wins. Um, I like Victor. Um... And I thought it was odd of them to uh, sit out of free agency. If they made, if they signed like Fred Van Vliet or Kyle Kuzma or um, Austin Reeves, I would have considered them for the play-in in the West. But no, they have a lot of unproven young guys. And by the way, when Benyama's not guaranteed to play 82 games, I guarantee you, he will not play 82 games. That guy, you know how big guys are. And I, part of me is nervous with him because Zion got a lot of hype. And Wemby has more hype than Zion did. But um, Wemby Yama, to me, as great as he is, I just don't trust him to say healthy 82 games. Although, I think Keldon Johnson's a good scorer. Devin Vassell was really good last year before he got hurt. Jeremy Schoen should be better year two. Zach Collins, they just paid. And then Greg Popovich is amazingly still the coach there. And that's another thing. Could Popovich be like the Belichick of this year and make poor coaching decisions and be realized, yeah, um, I think it's, it's, it's passed him by, kind of like Bill Belichick with the Patriots a little bit this year. So the, don't rule that out either. And I love Pop, and I think he's the best coach in NBA history. Just like Belichick's the best coach in NFL history. So um, just keep an eye on that as well. Okay, the playoffs. Um, we'll start with the playing tournament, the East. Um, I have the 17 Miami Heat against the 8-seed Indiana Pacers. Um, I think Miami wins that one. Um, playoff Jimmy, Zombie Heat, they get it done over Indiana. And in the 9-10, the Raptors against the Magic. I think the Raptors, with their experience with Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi, granted they have a new coach, but Orlando hasn't played in a play-in or playoff game since the pandemic. So um, I'm going with Toronto. And in the 8-9 play in Indiana against Toronto, I'll go Indiana. They have the best player on the court in uh, Tyrese Halliburton. Western Conference play in 17 Sacramento Kings against 18 Memphis Grizzlies. I'm going to go with the Grizzlies here because John Morant returns. And who knows, maybe they'll have a competent center by then or a competent power forward. And in your 9-10 is Clippers-Pelicans. We'll go with the Clippers over the Pelicans. Um, throwback game for Kawhi and, and Paul George. Um, maybe they have a third guy on the team. And maybe someone on New Orleans is um, not healthy. So um, hard to call, but we'll go with um, the Clippers over the Pelicans. And then the seven, and then the, uh, the last spot would be Um, 
the seven against the nine because I, because Memphis wins the first one. And to be seven, so Sacramento against the Clippers will go to Sacramento. This is De'Aaron Fox's time to shine. Sabonis so has the matchup over the Clippers starting big. So um, we'll go with Sacramento over the Clippers for the eighth seed. All right, the first round. Um, one versus eight is Celtics Pacers. We'll go with the Celtics in five here. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown always dominate in the first round against an Indiana team that doesn't have much experience outside of Miles Turner, who's played in a few playoff games. Here, two seven is Bucks Heat, so a rematch from last year. I think the Bucks have learned their lessons. Damian Lord's there for a reason. Bucks and six. Here, three six. I have Cavs Hawks, so you have. Um, Damien, or, uh, not Damien, uh, Damien Lillard in my head. Uh, Donovan Mitchell against Trey Young. Battle of two, uh, really polarizing but great players. Um, I think that's a seven-gamer. A lot of talent on both sides. Atlanta has the coaching advantage, so that's why it's tempting to pick Atlanta. But we're going to go with the Cavaliers over the Hawks in seven. And then your four, five, five, six, there's Knicks, um, this is where I'm going to go with my upset, only because of the uncertainty of Philadelphia. If I had to guess, I don't think James Harden's in Philly. And their team is weaker, but their record isn't bad because of the brilliance of Joel Embiid and a um, massive leap for Tyrese Maxey. But I could see the Knicks um, slowing down Embiid and... Um, MSG crowd getting into it. Jalen Brunson's been in a ton of big games. So, uh, Knicks over to Sixers in six. That's your five over four upset. Western Conference. Um, so, Sacramento would be the eight in theory against Denver, who's the one. Um, the Eastern teams did not meet in the postseason last year, as we know. But Nicole Jokic will literally eat up Sabonis. And I think Nuggets in six. And in Memphis is seventh here, so there's a rematch. Lakers Grizzlies would be your two seven. Um, except Lakers are the the two, and the Grizzlies are the seven. Job back, but LeBron, I think this could be like a throwback series for him. Anthony Davis, I think, will be the best big in the series. So Lakers over Grizzlies in six. Your three six would be Suns Warriors. So we have Durant against Curry, which is amazing. I think this is a great series. Um, but give me Stephen Curry over everybody in the postseason in terms of Western Conference. So here's an upset. Golden State over the Suns in seven. And then your four or five, I have the Thunder against the Timberwolves. Two really good young teams. Shea Gilgis Alexander, Anthony Edwards. Debatable who the best guy in this series will be. I'll go with SGA. And I think the Thunder are a deeper team. Um, I like their coach in Mark Daniel. I know Chris Finch has had some promise as well, but Carl Anthony Towns to me is somebody I really don't trust in the postseason series. Go Bears had some problems in the playoffs in the past as well, so I'm going to go with the Thunder over the Timberwolves in seven games. Semifinals. Um, Boston Knicks is the 1-5 um, rivalry series, Atlantic Division. This is another big moment for Jason Tatum. I think that they have a better team. Um, the Knicks have the coaching advantage here at Thibodeau, obviously, but um, I think the Knicks have the same outcome as they did a year ago, losing six games in the second round, except they will have a home playoff exit rather than a road playoff exit. So Boston is six over the Knicks. And then... Your three two knees, Bucks, Cavs. I think this is an interesting series. Best guy in the series is Giannis, and then Dame, and then I'd say Donovan Mitchell, and then Garland, maybe Mobley, and then Middleton. So a lot of big names in this series, obviously, but Giannis and the experience will carry over. So I'm gonna go with the Bucks over the Cavaliers in six. And then the West. Um your one four will be uh Nuggets Thunder. Should be a really fun series. Jokic against SGA. I think that the Thunder are a team to, that's on the come and a team that's here to stay, but I think that their magical season will end here, losing to the reigning champion Nuggets. So I'm going to go with the 
Nuggets over the Thunder in six games. And then your 2-6 is a rematch from last year. Lakers-Warriors, ho-hum, LeBron versus Curry. It's just coincidental that I have Curry against Durant and LeBron in the first two rounds of the playoffs. But here we are. Again, phenomenal series. I'm going to say it's the same outcome as last year, except Lakers will end the Warriors season at, um, what's that, the Chase Center now? I believe it is the Chase Center. So, the um, Lakers over the Warriors in six. But yes, it is the Chase Center. And then Anthony Davis will just eat up Draymond and Kevin Looney. And whoever's playing center for Golden State. All right, the conference finals, the East. It's what we all think it's going to be. Celtics box, your one-two. I think this is a classic. These two teams played a classic series two years ago. Jason Tatum with the big game six, and then they won game seven at home. I think it's going to be something similar and along those lines. So give me the Celtics over the Bucks in seven, and I think the Celtics defense will do a good job against Giannis, and I think it's a Drew Holiday redemption series too. And the West, it's a rematch from a year ago, Lakers-Nuggets. So how about this? I have the Lakers as the same playoff path as last year in the Western Conference with Grizzlies, Golden State, and Denver. So talk about coincidences. But this time around, I think the Lakers are a better team. That was the most competitive four-game sweep I've ever seen last year. The reason why the Nuggets won that series is because they had Nikola Jokic and the Lakers did not. And this time around, I think the depth will come through for the Lakers. And I think that the Nuggets' depth is not as um, good as it's been in the past and not as proven as it has in the past. And the Lakers adding Gabe Vincent was huge. So give me the Lakers over the Nuggets in six games. And then the NBA Finals, for the first time since 2010, Celtics, Lakers, in what should be an epic series, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Drew Holiday, Austin Reeves, Gabe Vincent, Chris Epps, Porzingis, big names aligned. And the first NBA Finals with the new broadcast team on ABC with uh, Doc Rivers and Doris Burke joining the great Mike Breen. And how would Doc feel about calling the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals in the first year in the broadcast booth? And this is Doris Burke's first finals in a while because she used to be the sideline reporter, and now she's the lead analyst. And obviously, Mike Breen has been doing this for years. Um, so Lakers-Celtics, like I said, stars abound. I think the Lakers are deeper. And I think that's the difference here between the two teams. So give me the Lakers over the Celtics in six games. And finals MVP, I'm going to say it is going to be Anthony Davis, because I think that he um, will dominate against Chris Stapps Porzingis. All right, the season awards to close out part one of the show. Um, MVP, I'm going to pick Jason Tatum. I think this is his year. I think that he's due. Um, And... But yeah, I think Tatum is due for a monster year, leading the Celtics to the best record in the NBA. So I'm going to go with Jason Tatum. Defensive player of the year, I'm picking Giannis Dedekumbo. I think this is a, a courtesy kind of deal because I think that he's a dominant defensive player, and I think that he'll mask Damian Lillard a little bit, and he's still a nemesis of blocking shots. At the rim. Um, Sixth man of the year. I'm going to go with Josh Hart of the Knicks. I think he'll be coming off the bench. And could swing games for them. And. It's funny because Emmanuel Quickly was a finalist for this a year ago. Josh Hart is their best bench player. So give me Josh Hart. Coach of the year. I'm going to go with Mark Daniel of the Thunder. He's rightfully the favorite for this award. 
I have them finishing in the top four in the West. So that makes sense. Rookie of the year, I'm going to go Scoot over Wemby only because I think there's a possibility Wembenyama misses time and Popovich might just throw in the towel again. So um, I'm going to go with Scoot Anderson, who I think is going to be an electric player for the Blazers. Most improved player, I'm going to go with Josh Kitty. He was 30-1 to 1 on FanDuel, and I put a big bet on that in the portfolio segment last week on the regular show. So I'm going to go with Josh Kitty for most improved. Um, executive of the year, I'm going to go with Brad Stevens. I think he did an excellent job putting that team together. And I think Christoph Porzingis and obviously Drew Holiday are going to be um, worthy of great preseason um, or um, offseason additions. And the most clutch player, um, I'm going to go with Jalen Brunson of the Knicks. Um, DeAndre Fox won last year. Um, this is a wide-open award, and I think that Brunson has just been Mr. Clutch since he arrived in New York. So I'm going to go with Jalen Brunson for the clutch player award. So there you have it for part one. Part two is going to be the superlatives segment, and part three is going to be the gambling. So stay tuned for that.